Hello, welcome to BurningMonkey.net. So in this tutorial, I'm going to do some smoking effects and try to finish up pretty much the rest of the script here to tell the story that's going to go on. So, so far I've got the beginning and up to this point to where it transforms into 3D. So what's left is this area where there's a smoke effect, and then it's like, oh, a real ball, and then it bounces and gets into the and causes them to hit a brick wall, at which point the circle goes back into being a 2D form. So, that said, I'm going to go back to Maya here, and I'm going to try to actually see how easy it is to create that smoke effect. So I don't remember how to use Maya as well as I used to. So already off the top of my, uh, off the top of this little screen here, I can see dynamics and there's actually these little things right here. So I create fire effect and create smoke effect. I wonder if these will actually help me create the effect I'm looking for. And right now I'm actually in camera. Uh oh, there we go. So I'm actually in camera. I'm gonna go back out of camera. Let's see if I can do that. Or maybe I can go to panels, perspective, uh, not camera, but perspective. And now I can edit this. I mean, or like move around freely without having to worry about, it. oh no, I moved the camera shot. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to click on my ball, my circle, or ball at this point. And I'm going to go ahead and click on create smoke effect. Let's see what that does. Okay, let's see. A sprite file must be specified. As a sprite image name in the options box, default set in of image. What the heck are they talking about? Okay, so I guess that doesn't create the. doesn't do anything. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another object. Surfaces, polygons. I'm gonna create another object. And I'm gonna see if I can apply it to that. Since this is already kind of textured already. It might be that problem if that's what it's trying to say. And I'm going to go down to, uh, technically we're supposed to do it from fluids. But, I mean, there are already dynamics here and there already has this little layer. Other sprite smoke, metal, sprite file must be specified as a sprite image. No. Fire. Fireworks. Oh, and as you can see, you know what? I'm just going to use that fire effect. And just change the color because right now it looks like color is kind of like this yellowish gold here as you can see on the on the right side of the panel and so if I go to render this right now like just a single let's see I think it's this one single shot of it you'll see that the color no it crashed ah, it's fine so I'm just gonna go ahead and reopen that okay so I got this project back open and it turned out that uh, there's something we're messing with my settings and the rendering. So the only thing that I did is go to presets, little presets and default settings. And that seemed to do the trick. So I actually created a sphere again, a polygonal sphere. And I applied the fire effect, the fire preset. And when I go to render it, there it goes. So now all I have to do, take this guy, the sphere, that I had the effect, put it inside my regular sphere character then go to my settings with the fire here I think I can just click on this fire you know see how do I do that uh, four there you go so you can just click on uh, so you press four and to go to wireframe mode and then click on the little um, effects that are little bubbles and then you go down to a particle shape now emitter and can mess with some of these um, settings like the particle rate and here the particle cloud which is actual effect we're actually seeing this color and I can go press six and I can go down to color and right now you're kind of seeing that color so we want to do gray so let's see if we can actually change this let's see click here change this to gray and here, let's all right. So let's change this color here. Uh, let's see how we do this. So go to gray. How about darkish gray to? Let's see. Hmm. 
Oh, okay, cool. So I click on this little um, spherical dial, and it actually has the effect. So let's let's say red, just because it's part of the character. That'd be kind of funny. And then back to gray. So let's let's just see what that looks like. And it'll be a dark gray. So let's see. Wait, let's go here and let's see if we can. Oh, yeah. Just a little hint of gray, of red, just so you're like, oh, this character kind of got himself burnt some, or some of his color turned off. And you can barely see that. Let's see if we can get a better render here. And I think the reason we're not getting the full thing is because of the white. Where there we go. So we're still getting this fire effect, which is not what I actually want. I want to see some... So I'm just going to go ahead and change this back to... There. And let's see what happens now. Okay, so we're still getting this kind of red. So I'm guessing there has to be some sort of... Um, Let's see, there's got to be something somewhere that's making this happen. Oh no. Da -da -do. Where should be editor? And let's see, blob map. I hope we change this intensity to like less. What happens now? Oh, wow. <laughs> so now there's like nothing there. So if we go to here. Oh, there goes intensity. So this intensity is reminding me of kind of like a glow. Or that's the density. Ah, okay. So density of something. Of this transparency blob map. Let's see. Oh, here it is. All right. So go into the blob map and change it to gray. And this is a sample. This is actually what it's going to look like. So we'll change that one as well. As you can see, it's starting to form this awesome little smoke texture. And for that one, slightly red, a darkish red. Let's see if we can get that darkish red. So go down to red. And let's get that kind of darkish red. All right, and let's go to render this real quick. And there you go, some weird effect. That's pretty creepy stuff. It looks like it's like this drawn charcoal or something. So, all right, I'm just going to change this back to gray. And we'll render that and see what that looks like. That's all right. Uh, we're still getting some of the, um, some of that, uh, let's see if we can, kind of like this yellowish, orange-ish glow. So, I don't know, everything else seems to be okay. Let's see, let's go back, I think, to these. There we go, so this one to go back. And back again. Dark cloud. Pre-illuminated controls, node of behavior, and extra users. Huh, all right. Indicates, so this, nope. Oh, could it be? I think so. All right, so let's make this gray. And this one. All right, let's see what this looks like now. There we go. Gray, gray, gray. So we just have to go into all of these little um, uh, sliders. So color, transparent, uh, maybe not transparency, but incandescence. And uh, the blob, blob map, and these actually have like little colors in them, and you, or textures depending on what you're using, and changing those will give us this result here. So, from 205 to 400, we're gonna have the smoke coming out. So, in my shot here, we go to Premiere Pro. Let's go some back here. So you can see smoke until you get to that point. 
So I was thinking that the smoke would start small or slightly small and then get bigger. So let's see if I can fix that. So let's see. It should be and um, let's see. It should be in the emitter property. So let's, let's click away. Let's go to four. Click on one of these emitter and let's see. If I can find that particle rates per second. Speed, speed, random, normal, inherit. Let's see if we can start it at less particle. Because it's, no, that's got to be here. <clears throat> okay, so going to go down to, oh, you can't. Let's see, 0.5. Nope, you can't. Okay. Scale weight by speed. The other thing I can do is actually start this. So start this at the bottom, like down here, and then have it move up slightly, slowly. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit S to key it. Right, and then as soon as we get up here, I'm just gonna go ahead and key this back up and S. And there you go. All right, so now that's done. Let me go to File, Save As. I don't want to re uh, save scene as. I don't want to over. Uh, what do you call that? I don't want to write over my original one. So I think it was, um, if you don't know what the file is called, it was called onecircle.md. So I'm just going to click on here. There it is. And I'm going to change this to v2, so version 2. Oh, you can also do like firing like for this. Uh, that's what I should have done, but that's fine. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I'm going to go here to panels, perspective, camera 1. Let's see what that looks like here. All right, cool. So I'm gonna save this again. I'm gonna space bar to make this full screen. And then I'm gonna go to create my own set of features here. So like I did before, AVI, and this is gonna be scene, scene seven, I believe. And if not, go back to Premiere Pro and let's see, this one six, so then seven. And then, so seven, okay, so we're in the scene seven, and start frame with, this is frame two, 402, so 402, nope, two, oh, 202, okay, so 202, and then it's going to go down to 402, and frame 402, and five frames going to render by each one frame. So what camera perspective, no. Change that to camera one, and here this file size. I want it to be HD 1080, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So now we go down to my software, and then we want it to do production quality and the highest quality. So that's pretty much it for this. Go ahead and close, and then we'll see. Go down to batch render, which this should be in rendering, and there it is, batch render. Which is this one? Not this, this one's to display what render you're on. This one's to export the current scene to the file and render the file in the background. So that's exactly what we want. Click that, and then the result rendering with my software. And let's just hope it doesn't crash. And there we go. Starting to render, and it's render render documents Maya project default images scene seven dot avi. So with that said. They go back to Premiere Pro. So in this episode, we pretty much just took this scene and made it pretty. So time, I will have this entire thing rendered in 3D. And I will just end up, uh, next time I see you guys, I will be giving you just an overview of what the process was and 
some tips, tricks, and things like that. Anyway, have a good one, and stay tuned.